Good morning, everybody. I think it's July 25th, 2023. When I saw this story, it was like, wait, this is an old story, you know, where the Russian fighter jets with a, a U.S. drone intercepting each other in the sky. <laughs> but it, it says July 25th, 2023 um, at 520 a.m. And it's a new story, guys. And, you know, a new narrative by the U.S. about what they're doing with their drone. It's so funny how the U.S. thinks they can have their spy drones Everywhere in the world, they can have thousands of military bases around the world setting up missiles to be close to anybody to attack. And yet nobody else is allowed to do anything, right? <laughs> Imagine if Russia had, or China had, missile bases all along the Mexican border along the USA. Oh, yeah. so Because that's what the USA did in Ukraine. Missile bases all along the Russian border, provoking what is going on right now. Getting, you know, you can't have your missile bases. You've broken the treaty. We had a treaty since World War II. You're not allowed to have missile bases on our border. The U.S. completely disobeyed that along with all their, uh, you know, labs, all the freaking... COVID labs all over um, Ukraine as well. So let's get into the story, guys. Um, I've never even seen the footage. Let's watch it together. Incoming. I'm going to do the audio here. Here comes the Russian jet. No, this is old footage. This is the original fuel footage. So they're showing that footage again from before with this new article. And remember that... It took down that whole plane and eventually crashed or whatever. Um, so that's... Anyways, let's move on to the story. A Russian fighter jet fired flares directly at an American MQ-9 Reaper drone over Syria on Sunday, damage, damaging its propeller. U.S. Air Force's Central announced on Tuesday, so it, which was, yeah, it just happened. The latest in a string of what military officials have denounced as risky and provocative behavior. The drone was a counterterrorism on a counterterrorism mission against the Islamic State group, according to the Air Force. Oh, yeah. I'm sure we can believe all that propaganda. On July 29th, 2023, at 1223 a.m. Eastern Time, Russian fighter aircraft flew dangerously close to a U.S. MQ-9 drone on a defeat ISIS mission. What? A defeat ISIS mission. Like, we should put some quotations around that. What has the U.S. ever defeated? What did you guys, What were you guys doing in Afghanistan? What were you guys doing in Iraq? What were you guys doing in Syria? Oh, proxy wars to feed the war machine, the war-mongering politicians and billionaires and bankers who just keep lending money and now they own Ukraine, as an example. BlackRock has bought up a huge amounts of Ukraine. The banks own Ukraine. Ukraine has borrowed so much money and they can't pay it back, so we're taking your territory. Oh, my God. And this ISIS mission, what a propaganda that was. The U.S., oh, we're the leaders of the world. We're top gun. We're going to destroy ISIS. We're going to destroy those Iraqis. We're going to get those um, people in Afghanistan, ISIS, Bin Ladens. <laughs> At the same time, we're going to all pay each other for all these contracts. And everybody's going to make money on the war machine. And we're going to keep printing money to buy more war machine. And then everybody else who is the peasants, like you and I, well, our money, our savings depletes because we don't own, we're not making the billion dollars in the war machine. We're just having our money go inflation like crazy, 50% over the last few years. And what happens when it hits another 50%? Our money is down 100%. Great. Thank you very much. Yeah. Let's continue. Okay, so on a defeat ISIS mission, there's that propaganda term, harassing the MQ-9 and deploying flares. So this time flares instead of fuel. Great idea. From a position directly overhead with only a few meters of separation be aircraft. Well, congratulations, Air Force guys. You are killing it. Air Force Central Command Lieutenant General Alex Gwensovich said, one of the flares hit the drone. Freaking nice work. Severely damaging its propeller. Ha <laughs> ha. According to the Greenwich, the Russian fighters blatant disregard for flight safety 
detracts from our mission to ensure the def enduring defeat of ISIS. Oh, you've been working on this enduring defeat of ISIS for how many decades there, USA, NATO? We call upon the Russian forces in Syria to put an immediate end to this reckless, unprovoked, and unprofessional behavior. Well, me as a citizen of North America, I call on the US and the NATO and the Biden and the crazy warmongering left. We call upon you in Syria to put an immediate end to this reckless, unprovoked, and unprofessional behavior. In fact, we call upon you to put a serious end to immediate end to this reckless, unprovoked, and unprofessional behavior in Iraq against Russia. <laughs> in your proxy war, trying to like, warmongering, and to China, which is next. The crew, crew remotely operating the MQ-9 was able to maintain control of the aircraft and fly it back to home base. And there's a picture of the prop. Bam! The U.S. military has recently observed what it has called increasingly unsafe and unprofessional incidents in the sky. Well, what are you guys doing near Russian airspace when a war's going on that you're supposedly not leading and paying for and ordering and controlling the narrative about no peace talks? Nope, no peace talks. We're going to take every last male Ukrainian is going to be dead before we stop this war and have a peace talk until we're out of everybody. We're going to murder hundreds of thousands of Ukrainians. We don't give a shit about Ukraine. We don't give a shit about Ukrainian people. We don't get a shit about the environment. No, we're blowing up Nord Stream pipelines left, right, and center. We don't give a shit. We just want to make money and make power and control. Last week, a Russian Su-35 fighter endangered the crew of, of a manned U.S. MC-12 by forcing it to fly through its wake turbulence, according to a release from the Air Force Central. Oh, another report. <laughs> this reduced the crew's ability to safely operate the aircraft and put the four crew members' lives at risk. Well, what are you guys doing out there in the first place? Get the hell out of the skies. And for two days in a row earlier this month, officials have said Russian pilots dropped parachute flares into the path of U.S. MQ-9 Reaper drones, which took evasive maneuvers to avoid damage. Russia claimed the drones had entered airspace designated for a Russian-Syrian counter-drone exercises. Now, I got to mention at the same time, there's news about terrorist attacks by Ukraine through USA on Russian soil and it's happening just two days ago their drone attacks are happening in the in Russia blowing up apartment buildings blowing up certain objects that they th believe they can hit these are terrorist attacks in Russia and actually blowing up buildings versus you guys getting a damaged prop and you're complaining your left is complaining maybe we should go look at that article next about what you guys are doing with the drones all right, let's continue. A senior U.S. defense official told reporters there was no such exercise saying it's just an excuse to go after our MQ-9s and try to intercept. I don't give a shit what your excuse is or what their excuse is. You guys are at war with Russia. You're lucky they're just drawing, throwing flares at you and not doing terrorist attacks like blowing up pipelines, the biggest disaster for our nature in the last decades. You fuck. Similar incidents have occurred outside Syria. In March, a Russian fighter collided with a U.S. drone over the Black Sea, bending its propeller. The U.S. force was, was forced to bring down the craft off the coast in Ukraine, according to the officials. And that's the story that the video was at the top. Wow, that's a 07, nice little fighter jet there. A Russian fighter flies, yes. The U.S. has around 900 troops in eastern Syria assisting in the fight against IS. While Russia is a military presence in northwestern Syria as part of its mission to support Syrian President Bashar al-Assad. Russia and U.S. forces for years have made use of a de-confliction hotline to let each other know when they are carrying out missions so as to avoid any dangerous misunderstandings. Like, pull, like blowing up the pipeline, right? The Nord Stream pipelines. Did you use the hotline then there, Mr. Biden and the U.S. crazy extremist left? You warmongering left asses? The hotline is used, but it sometimes gets very heated and a lot of back and forth during tense encounters, according to the U.S. senior defense official. Okay, so now here, let's go to the other side of what I'm talking about with these drone attacks in Russia on RT News. It's so funny because if you go on like Yahoo or Google and type in RT News and then drone attacks, it doesn't, you can't even find RT News. You literally have to type RT.com, guys. Uh, they're blocking. They've completely blocked this website. So, um, 
former Russian president Dmitry Medvedev, he was making a suggestion about um, Moscow could strike non-typical targets beyond military warehouses and energy infrastructure as a response to the drone attack. So let's get into this article. Ukraine is carrying out attacks on civilian targets in Russia in order to divert attention from its floundering counteroffensive. Former Russian President Dmitry has claimed, commenting hours after Ukrainian drones attempted to strike targets in Moscow and Crimea. Medvedev, <laughs> Medvedev, that's the ex-president, suggested that Russia's response should be unexpected. Like they're just heating up tensions here. Who currently serves Med, Medvedev? I see. I've never heard his name. Sorry. Who currently serves as deputy chairman of Russia's Security Council wrote on Telegram on Monday that Ukraine was starved of any military success and needed to score informational wins, even if bogus and bloated. That's why the Ukrainian Nazis and the population recruited by them also find strikes on civilian facilities acceptable. Medvedev stated. He also claimed there are rising concerns among the Ukrainian public and cited the impatience of Kiev's Western masters for battlefield victories. Therefore, the Bandera bastards increasingly choose peaceful civilian targets for their vile attacks. Everyone should be ready for this. Medvedev warned, referring to the infamous Ukrainian Nazi collaborator during the World War II. There's a little quote here. We we need to choose non-typical targets for our strike. Not only warehouses, energy hubs, and oil bases. There are other places where they are not expecting us yet and where the effect will be very significant. Yes, so Russia will have to do something about these civilian attacks in Russia, in Moscow. So again, the Med... Medvedev's remarks followed an attempted Ukraine drone strike on Moscow on Monday morning. The incident involved two UAVs which were suppressed by electronic warfare measures and crashed into non-residential buildings. The attack did not result in any casualties or serious damage, officials said. The same day, the Russian Defense Ministry said that a Ukrainian UAV attack had hit an ammunition depot in Crimea, adding that Moscow's forces had downed a total of 17 drones. I mean, they're just throwing in these drones, guys, all these U.S. funded drones and people who actually like fly. I've actually met some, I met this girl that she's like, I went to Ukraine and I brought them a whole bunch of drones. I met her in the hot tub when I was at a resort and it's, I was just like, oh my God, you know, just because you have Ukrainian blood, you really need to start doing some deep, deep research about how the war machine actually works. Don't just side with your countrymen. I'm not siding with my countrymen of Canada and the Americans. Many aren't siding with the Biden or the American country. We all know that the North American, these they have fallen to communists. They've fallen to these collective communists. And so it's so funny how people like, I'm, you know, I'm Ukrainian, so I'm going to support Ukraine in this war. And I'm like, no, you're you're pushing warmongering. You should be supporting peace and saving your people from dying, which is the U.S. is just pushing through and the rest of the world, the EU, the U.N. Sorry, guys, off topic. Although Ukrainian officials have not officially claimed responsibility for the raids, Mikhail Fedorov, the country's digital transformation minister, hinted at Kiev's involvement and promised more of those incidents in future. The Russian foreign ministry condemned the raids as another criminal act by the Kiev regime and say they were pointless from a military standpoint. Moscow reserves the right to harsh retaliatory measures, the ministry added. Deep. So... Here is going to be some interesting comments. And these are ones where people say Putin has been way too freaking soft. And there's a lot of Russians that might say that or think that. And I've seen it in the comments before. If he just took a hard stance at like, we need to what, look what the, the falling West is doing. We need to hit them hard, finish this war hard and fast. Not like, but Putin has been very calculated. He's been very soft on his approach. Um, and whether that's the way to go or not, who would know? 
But I do think Putin is a very smart man for what he's doing with his soft approach, very calculated, because he's waiting for people like us in the West. This is what I'm assuming. The more, the longer he provoke, puts this war with a soft approach, the more people wake up to the war machine of the USA, the war machine of the UN. Why is nobody investigating the Nord Stream pipelines? Why is the UN and the EU ignoring it completely? They actually voted on, you know, we're gonna. They had a vote about doing an investigation into it, and they all, all the freaking parliamentary idiots, all they're all part of the narrative. They all voted except for Russia and China and Saudi Arabia. Everybody Everybody else voted to no investigation. We don't need an investigation. So, but as time goes on, more people are waking up to it, and then more people are going to understand. Well, look what's really happening here. The West is the the attacker on the world, and the, so is the EU and the parliaments. So here's the quite. God bless Med Medvedev. If he were president, things might be over by now. Putin should have taken a reasonable defense action with immediate military intervention. The moment Maidan was struck, and definitely after Crimea was struck, nobody can reason with words with murderous narcissists. Late responding to eight years of 14,000 plus murder victims is too little, too late. So, And he's talking about the Maidan coup in 2014, which... This is, but then the war's been going on ever since. And since 2014, the Ukrainian army, you know, with a puppet regime of the USA, that was what the coup happened with the puppet Victoria Newland was involved in that from the US. There's been murdering the people of Eastern Ukraine, which are Russian descent from the USSR, you know, in places like Donbass, where they're being murdered by the Ukrainian army. They're being bombing and bombing for 10 years, 14 years. 10,000 plus people, and this guy's estimated 14,000, m- murdered by the the regime of Ukraine. So there you guys have it, some information about it. And oh, he's, t- he's been soft since the Maidan coup. Could have, he should have stepped in right then and there, and that was a, possibly a mistake. But you know, you never know, right? Um, Biden, Poroshenko, and Zelensky are the main indicable culprits in crimes of Ukrainian affairs. Together they have caused enormous amounts of citizenry casualties and property destruction and all of it stems from the U.S. foreign business infiltrationism, the Pentagon infiltrationism and Biden's protectionism of the most corrupt and moral son. Western profiteerism ideology is based this war. It takes human minds and bodies to operate Zelensky, Biden's violent attack apparatus, take out the human element and not one weapon can be used. Surprise, Zelensky's insane call of destroyers are being targeted. Logistic intelligence are demanded to exterminate the human, hate-filled vermin infestation and give Ukraine back to its multicultural residents. Indictating Biden. Indicting Biden. (laughs) 